Well, well, well. Yo, there's only 200 of these. This is 75 out of, I should not have wore this. Yeah. Hat picks. The video series that gets 180,000 views per video. Is that, I'm told that's false. For now, no, hey everybody, welcome to Steve's Hat Picks. That, sh that should say Steven's Hat Picks. My mom would be very happy about that. Where we look at plays from around the NHL, or uh, just hockey this time, that impressed me. And, because there's very little to talk about, this is also gonna be a Stanley Cup final prediction video. <gasps> That was an odd sound. Well, I'm gonna make more odd sounds when I talk about the Stanley Cup final, but that's later. Sorry, there's like no hockey games anymore. There's been like two NHL games since our last video and there's uh, there's only gonna be one between this one and the next hat picks because the schedule is, is good. As a result, we're gonna have to dip into the CHL, but uh, this is pretty good. Here's Max Martin laying a bomb of a hit on Keith Getson. Max Martin. The defenseman dumps it in and he's the first to a huge hit. Martin collides heavily with Keith Getson. Neither team is really showing any signs of being here on this big stage. They're getting right after it. And there's Martin who goes in against Getson and Getson flies hit first into the boards. Matt, Max Martin laying the big blow, but he took it quite hard as well. I think probably as Getson fell down on him, Martin went immediately to the bench. Getson checking his chicklets. Keith Getson, interim general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. Is that, how many more? Okay, I get one more wrong thing. There's a lot to process here, man. Hey, here, show it again before I talk about it. There's Martin goes in against Getson, and Getson flies hit first into the boards. Matt, Max Martin laying the big blow, but he took it quite hard as well. I think probably as Getson fell down on him. First of all, wow. Second of all, everyone's talking about, oh, boom, yeah, Max Martin just rocking Keith Getson. How is Keith Getson ever gonna get up from that? The answer is like this. He gets up like it's nothing. And on top of that, not only does he get up like it's nothing, what does he get up off of? The ice? No. He gets up off of Max Martin's neck. Imagine wrecking a guy with the hit of the season only to have him land on top of your head and neck. Max Martin lays an unbelievable check only to have 200 pounds of Keith Getson, including his equipment, crash down on him. And we haven't even gotten to the part where they're going high velocity with knife shoes. Did my foot even get in the knife shoes? There you go. I'm flexible, I'm athletic. That's why they hired me. It's not? Okay, there's three. Wow, this is early. Listen, every time I bring this up, hockey players go, uh, yeah, I know I should wear neck protection, but it's uncomfortable, so I'm gonna yank it off. Phrasing? Yes, it is true that neck protection can be uncomfortable. Counter argument, so can be severed arteries. And man, the game is played at such a high speed, such a, hockey is like it has never been before. We see hits like this. We've never seen hits like this at this speed and Feet are gonna come up, and those feet have knives on them. And at some point, we're gonna have to figure that out because, oh my God. Show it again, man. Show, show the karate kick, the accidental karate kick. Like, I'm not even talking about someone like, ah, doing, uh, that one didn't even make it in the shot. I'm not even talking about someone doing like a Mortal Kombat Liu Kang kick. I'm talking about, they have no control of their feet in this situation. Oh, it's Johnny Cage, you're right. I'm saying Liu Kang kicked as well. He did the bicycle th through the air. I definitely can't do that. It hurts. Anyway, but enough of me ruining the moment. This hit is unbelievable and it's a hat pick. Show it again. Our next hat pick, I'm told, is actually from the National Hockey League. This comes from the Western Conference Final between the Blues and Sharks that is now over. I know, tell me about it. When is the next hockey game? Okay. Here's Vladimir Tarasenko with a beautiful penalty shot against the San Jose Sharks, but man, you gotta show the setup too. First of all, Jay Bomeister with the with the beautiful shoulder check. I, I saw Coach Jeremy talking about that. And, and I really like him. Sends it up the ice, little tap a tap a tap a pass to Tarasenko. He's on a breakaway, gets hauled down. That's a penalty shot. What always annoys me about that is there was an amazing setup from Jay Bomeister. There's a little tap a tap a tap a pass to set up the breakaway. No assists because it's a penalty shot. On a penalty shot, there are no assists. And I think that's wrong. I also don't believe in it strongly enough to really care. But I just thought I'd point that out. Anyway, here's the actual shot from Tarasenko, someone who I've said hasn't been that good in these playoffs and I regret it deeply. And it's their number one sniper, Tarasenko against Jones, scores! And the Blues bench explodes as it is three nothing. Starts out to his right, he cuts across the grain, look where he goes. 
He's seen the clips, he's seen the video, he knows. And he just missed one from below the, the circle on the last shift. He wasn't gonna miss that one. Who is that he scored on there, Drew? Who is the Sharks goalie, Drew? It was Martin Jones. But you can't even hate on him, man. Not a lot of goalies do well against Vladimir Tarasenko one-on-one. -on -one. That is a snipe, that is a hat pick, and that is part of the reason that the St. Louis Blues have gone back to the Stanley Cup Final. And speaking of which, I wanna throw out a special hat pick. Two teams that I think have had special seasons. The Boston Bruins making it to the Stanley Cup Final. I mean, they're a very good team, of course. The San Jose Sharks making it to the Final Four. I mean, they were very good and then got Eric Carlson as well. Of course. But I gotta give a special shout out to the Carolina Hurricanes. They got this owner who came in and we're not really sure what he's thinking or doing. We need scoring, so we're gonna get rid of Jeff Skinner? And we need more scoring. Well, yeah, you just got rid of Jeff Skinner. Giant trades. They spend less than 80% of the salary cap. Their goaltending trio is a, is a pile of lint. Like a kid in a candy store reached into his pocket and banged on the counter, what can I get for this many? And the answer was Scott Darling, Curtis McElhaney, and Peter Morazic, and that got them to the final four? But on top of that, they were also the bunch of jerks. The fun team with the fun celebrations and the also on fire and underrated Twitter account. The Carolina Hurricanes reminded a lot of people that hockey's supposed to be fun. And to me, they also forced a lot of people to tell on themselves, I don't like fun, I know. Most of the people, I don't like fun. I was like, yeah, I didn't think you'd ever did. I didn't look at you and go, there's a fun guy right there. But it turns out you can have fun and win. And a lot of people are gonna go, but they didn't win. Mm, they went to the final four. Odds are they did better than your team. Bunch of Bruins fans in the comment. I said odds are. So a hat pick, a tip of the hat pick to the Carolina Hurricanes for their season. And also, to the St. Louis Blues, who are not done yet. They're back in the Stanley Cup Final for the first time in a very long time. That's a hat pick on its own. Who'd they play last time? Who? But dude, this team was dead to rights. They were last place on January 3rd. Heading into the season, I thought the Blues were one of the best teams in the league. I thought they were a top five team in the league. And I even argued at several points that I thought they had the best summer out of any NHL team. Dude, they were already a good team. They got Ryan O'Reilly, they're great. Then they lose practically every game. They fire their coach and they find themselves in last place in 2019. Craig Berube comes in and he helps turn things around. But as Jeff Merrick always says, you show me a good coach, I'll show you a good goalie. Jordan Binnington getting nominated for the Calder. Jordan Binnington, who by the way, last season refused assignment to the ECHL, which used to stand for the East Coast Hockey League, but now the ECHL stands for the ECHL. That is a real thing, look it up. And because he refused assignment to the ECHL, the Blues sent him to the Bruins farm team on loan. Like are the Bruins scouting right now with a bunch of like guys from Providence? It's not a bad idea. Although I'm thinking Bennington is a little bit better than he was last year. The Blues did not just fight and claw back to barely make the playoffs. They steamrolled into the thing. So even though they ended up in the same place that I predicted they would be in September, after seeing where they were in January, oh, they're gonna get rid of Pareko, they're gonna get rid of Petrangelo, they're gonna get rid of Tarasenko. Man, that's a hat pick, what a story. So, 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 a lot of you thought that was a graphic. It is in fact a TV screen that I can walk around and make you uncomfortable with. You wanna know my Stanley Cup final prediction, huh? You wanna know who I think is gonna win the Stanley Cup because therefore, they will not. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. Yo, there's only 200 of these. This is 75 out of, I should not have wore this. Oh my God, that's legit. I didn't know. Oh, well, won't be touching that again. Um, where were we? Oh yeah, um, the uh, uh, final prediction. So I picked the Tampa Bay Lightning to make the Stanley Cup final out of the East. That was wrong. And I even knew Tampa would have had to play one of either Toronto or Boston to get there. So I predicted Boston would bow out in, at the latest, the second round. Oops. However, in my bracket, I did predict that the St. Louis Blues would get to the Stanley Cup final out of the West. So good for me. Only half an idiot. That's a, that's a hat pick. 
My opinions have obviously changed a little bit since I made my bracket uh, many moons ago. A month, a little over a month ago. Here's the thing you need to know about this Stanley Cup final. This has been known as the playoffs of upsets, right? None of the division winners won, the wild card chaos squad. It was a lot of fun. And one of them even made it to the final four. It was fun, it was chaotic for a little while, for sure. And then you look at the final four and you're like, Sharks and Blues, mm, Boston, mm. Carolina was really the last hope of chaos and they got swept. Basically the hockey gods got Cinderella the hell out of the ball. And now here we are with just the Bruins and Blues left. And honestly, I think it's the two best teams in the league going head to head. To call a favorite in this series is really hard. A really interesting factor that I think is especially special to this season is rest. The Boston Bruins are about to have 11 days off between games. That's unbelievable. Meanwhile, the Blues though, they're getting five. And I don't know if you've taken a look at the Stanley Cup final schedule, but it's gonna take forever. There's gonna be like, what, two or three periods of three days off? So rest becomes an interesting factor because anyone who was fatigued or just had small injuries, just bumps and bruises, little tweaks, things like that, they'll be fine, they'll be good to go. But anyone who's really injured, and you know what I mean, really injured, a rest like that isn't long enough to really make a difference to them. Like we're talking about like out of the Carolina series, there are guys out for four to six weeks. There are guys out for four to six months. In the Leafs Bruin series, which feels like forever ago, there were guys playing in game seven and they were battling away and they wanted to make it to the next round. And yeah, we're gonna play hockey for the next month and a half. Soon as they get eliminated, out six months. There are guys on the Blues and on the Bruins who are like that. We just don't know who they are yet. I don't know anything, I don't have inside knowledge, but that's always how it goes, right? Dude, after 2013, we learned that Patrice Bergeron was playing with a punctured lung. He could be playing with somebody else's left leg right now, we wouldn't know. But here's the thing, you think well-rested player, therefore it's gonna be the best hockey. No. Dude, 11 days off for the Bruins, five days off, for the Blues? These guys are gonna be full of energy and rusty as hell. I think it's gonna be sloppy hockey to start the Stanley Cup Final, which is the best, funnest kind. Dude, the Bruins are having an intra-squad scrimmage right now. I saw a really mean tweet that the Bruins should invite the Leafs. I mean, they're not doing anything. Stop, we're already dead. My prediction for the Stanley Cup Final is it's gonna start shot out of a cannon. Goaltending, a little bit unpredictable, which is fun. You have rookie sensation Jordan Bennington, and you wonder when the clock's gonna strike midnight, second Cinderella reference. Maybe it never will. He doesn't look nervous. There was that factor of maybe the Bruins know him a little bit better than other teams because he played with their farm team. But Tuka Rask has been the best goalie of these playoffs. I don't know who's gonna win the Conn Smythe if the St. Louis Blues win the Stanley Cup, okay? That's gonna be revealed in the Stanley Cup final. If the Boston Bruins win the Stanley Cup, Tuka Rask is winning the Conn Smythe. Guy stopped 94% of the shots he's faced. He got a shutout in the sweep game. Their lineup compositions, I think, are opposite. I think the Blues have a better forward core overall, but the Bruins have a better line up top. The, the Blues don't have an answer for the Bruins' top line. On defense, I think the Blues have a better top defensive pairing than anything the Bruins can throw at them. But you could argue, especially with a very well-rested Zdeno Chara, he badly needed it, the Bruins might have a better D overall. The Bruins' power play has been ridiculous. Jaden Schwartz has been ridiculous. Certain players have a lot more to give. Tarasenko looks like he's just scratching the surface of what he can do. The Bruins have some young guys who look like they have more than... Uh, the Bruins have some young guys, a bunch of them, who look like they could contribute more. Both teams have staved off eliminations. The Blues were down three games to two. The Bruins were down three games to two. The Bruins were down two games to one twice. This is as even a Stanley Cup final as you can have. So it always comes down to that little devil experience. The Boston Bruins have lots of young components to the team but they've also got the leadership group, the guys who have been there before, and there are a lot. Chara, Bergeron, Marchand. So I think both teams know how to score, they know how to defend, they have good goaltending, decent special teams. I think they're both decently physical. So if it comes down to experience, the 2019 Stanley Cup champions will be, and trust me, it's gonna be rough for me, the Boston Bruins. I just wanna know who's gonna fly through the air in the cup winning goal. I think it's gonna be a dogfight, it's gonna be a slugfest, it is not gonna be easy, even if it's a sweep. 
I think there's going to be a lot of ice packs at the end of it. But I do think it will be the Boston Bruins. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. And I know what your comment's going to be. It's not the 2019 Stanley Cup. It's the Stanley Cup in 2019. Whatever. You're a nerd. Just leave a comment. I'm sorry. That was mean.